I've been with Australian Foreign Minister. It is not a hard task to say to the Americans, after all we do for the Americans, you do not want this Australian extradited. If our Prime Minister and our Foreign Minister were to say that to their American counterparts, then I am certain that shamefaced the Americans would drop this extradition attempt. But I cannot believe that our Foreign Minister hasn't got it in her to say to the US Secretary of State, look, in the context of all we do for the American alliance, we want you to drop the extradition of this Australian citizen. Because he's only done one thing that is the basis for this American extradition. And that is, he exposed American war crimes in Iraq. I think this is a profoundly moving film about a man who's had terrible injustice. Uh, and it's a very important film about press freedom and democracy and uh, every, everyone should go and see it and uh, all the best to Julian. Well it's a real honour to be here to help launch this film about John Shipton's quest to free his son Julian Assange. By the same token it's a disturbing sign of the times that any father would have to be devoting his life to defending his son's right to tell the truth. Because we all, of course, raise our children to believe that telling the truth is right and that killing is wrong. Yet here we are, leaving them a world where those who do the killing are above the law and those who tell the truth about it are punished and persecuted. For Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, David McBride, Stephen Donziger, I could keep going and, of course, the countless people who are censored, fired, smeared, attacked for daring to question the official narrative of the day. So the Assange precedent is everywhere and it's dangerous because the case against Julian Assange is all about creating a world where those in power can kill and destroy and do it in secret and do it with impunity and crush anyone who tries to hold them to account just like they're crushing Julian Assange in Belmarsh Prison right now. And John Chipton said recently, very eloquently, that the case against Julian is not held up by the law, it's held up by force. And it's a legal Frankenstein's monster of abuses of power all stitched up together, lurching around the globe, you know, from extraterritorial applications of US laws to state manipulation and fabrications by authorities in Sweden, to collusion between British and Swedish prosecutors, to dirty deals between the US and Ecuador, the IMF and Ecuador, violations of the laws of asylum, a stream of last minute changing superseding indictments, the latest of which is based on the lies of a convicted fraudster and child sex offender who's openly admitted to fabricating his testimony in return for immunity from the FBI. And now it's widely known that the prosecution spied on Julian Assange's meetings with his lawyers while plotting to kidnap him and or assassinate him. So this is the entity that sits above the law in court in the UK. It's a legal monstrosity. It's an abomination of the law. And this is what John Shipton's been touring the world to try to expose. And this is what we're leaving to our kids. A lawless world where if you see something, you better not say something. You shut your mouth or you suffer the consequences. So John Shipton's fight is really all of our fight. But John Sanders' family is all of our fight. Because either we stand with them or we leave future generations in the dark and at the mercy of unchecked power. So, you know, people often say, well, what can I do? I'm just one person. You know, and every act or every failure to act every day has a ripple effect in the world. You can reach someone who reaches someone who reaches someone. And you never know what you've said in train. So if you're watching, be a ripple, come see this film and help it make a splash. Woo! Whoa! <laughs>
We've sat him on the phone before. Yeah. 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 What are you talking about on a, on a kind of regular basis? If Julian is extradited to the United States to face these charges, he will be the first, but not the last. What are your worst fears? That it just collapses under the strain. It looks as though what journalists do for a living is seen to be a criminal act. Gabriel Shipton has just had the world premiere of the film Ithaca. Gabriel, thanks for spending a few minutes here with Consortium News. Thanks, sir. Just tell me quickly, what was the origins of this film? Whose idea was it? When did it come about? Uh, so, uh, it came about, so in 2019 I went to see Julian. Um, he was, he just gone into the prison. Uh, he was on suicide watch. He was in a very, um, uh, you know, I, I left that day of the prison thinking that I would never see him again, that that, that could be the last time I see him. So that's when, uh, you know, we started thinking, how can we get a different side of this story out? Um, and then we said, and John was doing all his uh, advocacy at the time, and we just uh, sort of thought, uh, you know, let's start following John. Uh, we got a camera following John around, and then, yeah, that's how that's how it started. And we, we filmed with John for I think six or seven months before hooking up with the director Ben Lawrence, and that's when he came on board, and we filmed all through the hearings, and yeah, and here we are. So you you actually started filming before you got a director. Yes. This was your production the company you worked for. Then. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we we've, we've done it. You know, it's, I I have an independent production company, and then we've we've done it all ourselves. So. Who is the target audience for this film? I think it, uh, the target audience for me is, uh, you know, it's an older audience. Uh, you know, John being the protagonist uh, will attract, I think, an older, older audience. Uh, so, sort of like, you know, your average Guardian reader who might, um, needs to know a bit more, and might need an emotional access point uh, to the story, to Julian's persecution, to really, you know, reactivate them and, and get them to understand what's really going on. Uh, I think that's that's our target audience. Is it to counteract which is clearly a concerted effort to spread disinformation about Assange and WikiLeaks since that Pentagon study in 2008 that WikiLeaks published that showed that they were doing that? Yeah, uh, I, you know, well, you know, this is in a sense we've created our story, you know, John's story, some stellar obviously is in it as well. Uh, so this isn't any kind of propaganda or whatever, we're just trying to be, uh, you know, as truthful as to how John and Stella see this persecution through their eyes, how they experience it uh, as a father and a fiancé, uh, how the audience will relate to that. I think we saw tonight uh, everyone, you know, was very emotional and um, emotionally connected, outraged, uh, so I think, I think, you know, it's doing its job. The film. What is the essential message of how to boil it down on the film? I think the sort of big door message to get people in is the father's fight for his son, uh, but, but at the end of the day, I think the message is, uh, you know, the power rests with us, you know, it, it's up to us to do something, and we see through John, who's a 76-year-old man, um, that even, you know, even if he, if he, if he can keep going and, and doing something, then we all can, and we can all take, uh, you know, grab onto our democratic rights and, and really use them uh, before we lose them, basically. So how optimistic are you about the High Court uh, judge's decision? Uh, I mean, uh, I think I, all, all I can really do, or all we can really do, is create the political climate for the charges to be dropped or the, or the High Court to, to reject the extradition. Uh, and, and then I'm not really optimistic. Uh, you know, if, you, if you look through history uh, of how Julian's case or how his persecution has been going, uh, you can see, uh, you know, at every step of the way, there's corruption, abuse, uh, torture. Uh, I, don't, I can't see that changing, but I, what I can see changing is the momentum, uh, you know, momentum politically, like we're, we're now getting things like this film out there, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's 25 organisations in the US that wrote another letter to Merrick Garland, uh, so I, you know, I think the momentum, uh, the political change is happening. Yeah. And then, and then the political climate now exists for the High Court to reject the extradition and for Joe Biden uh, to drop the charges. And if the U.S. appeals allowed, he doesn't drop the charges. 
How do you feel about a bail hearing after that? Does he have any chance? Uh, of bail? Yeah. If you, uh, if you go to the Supreme Court, which I guess you would be the next step. Yeah, well, I think two years' time, so he, he can apply to the European Court of Human Rights for bail. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if he's been on remand for two years, then they can apply for the European Court of Human Rights. So that's coming up. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't, you know, that's... The European Court of Human Rights, I don't think they're going to say that Julian should remain in prison. So, uh, will, will Britain honour that decision? Well, you know, uh, it's up to them. Uh, but they'll look, they'll look even more subservient to US interests if, if they don't. There are some people you just can't kill because there are some messengers that just cannot be silenced. The truth ultimately cannot be crucified. The truth ultimately will come out. Julian is the public face of our resistance. We will not be silenced, but we will not allow them to crucify the messenger. God bless Julian, God bless us all. Do everything, everything, everything you can because we can win this. We can actually win this. It will be so sweet when we do. It will be so, so sweet.